Good Tuesday morning. Welcome back to your Toledo Zoo for our daily hashtag Zoo Open Online live feed. Today we are with the wolves and going to witness some wolf enrichment. So we'll give you guys a few moments to join us here. Let us know that you're here. We'll give a few shout outs and then we will get right into seeing these guys enjoy their Pokemon themed enrichment today. So let's see who's joining us here. Hi, Gabriella and Julianne. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Good morning, Jenna. All right. As we said, we are here on the north side of the zoo with our wolves. Yay, Carissa says wolves are her favorite. Yes. Hi, Emily. Thanks for tuning in today. Hi, Connie. Oh, it's Connie's fourth birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Connie. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you have an awesome day. Hi, Selena. Hey, Brittany. Hi, Cypher. Good morning to Kayla and Jackie and Finley. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Calvin and Carter in Detroit. Good morning, Rebecca. All right. Hey, Gavin and Grayson in Kansas City. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Sue. Good to see you again today. Hi, Athena and Caden. All right, guys, we are going to get started with our morning announcements this morning. We, as always, appreciate everybody tuning in and joining us for these daily live feeds, which we've committed to doing while we are closed. And unfortunately, we do remain closed and we do not yet have a set reopening date. As you guys know, we are waiting for the governor to give us some guidance and guidelines. He has said that he will address this hopefully this week. So we are as hopeful as you guys are for some good news coming from him soon. As soon as we know something more, we will let you know on here on social and on our website. So stay tuned for that. We are looking forward to welcoming you guys back just as much as you guys want to come back. So thank you for your patience on that. As soon as we know something more, you will know too. Don't forget it is Meals on the Go day. Get your order in before one o'clock. You can always add on those cookie kits, cupcake kits, dessert, adult beverages, all the good stuff, but it's got to be in to toledozoo.org slash meals on the go before 1 p.m. today. And don't forget our kids club is underway. Thanks to Toby and Sue Cardoni for their sponsorship. We are offering a summer kids club online with a bunch of cool virtual experiences for ages five to about 12, 13. If you wanna check that out, go to toledozoo.org slash kids club. And don't forget our education department is doing amazing things with all of their virtual offerings. Go to toledozoo.org slash virtual to check all those out. And our native plant sales continue. If you are in the gardening mood, check out wildtoledo.org and get your pre-orders in now. The next pickup date is on the website. All right, guys, once again, thank you for your continued support during this difficult time. You can always hit that donate button here on our live feeds or go to toledozoo.org slash donate for all the ways that you can help sustain your zoo during this difficult time. All right. We Amanda, are here go with ahead, Raven, doors. one of our wolf keepers, and she is going to talk to us today all about our three awesome males. And we've got some Pokemon enrichment that she and um, some of our keepers created for them. So Raven, welcome. Hello. And tell us all about these guys. All right. So we have three wolf boys. They are all brothers. Their names are Lobo, Loki, and Tundra. They are six years old. And right now they're about to grab some of the awesome Pokemon enrichment that we have. Looks like somebody grabbed a box there. <laughs> so some of the boxes include some nutmeg. Um, these boys have very strong sense of smell and nutmeg is actually one of their favorite Whoa. little spices that they like to kind of roll in. It's actually pretty cute. <laughs> um, let's see what else somebody grabs here. And another box. Oh, we've got another box. <laughs> the brown boxes actually have some peanut butter um, smears. And this one running in front of you, that was Tundra. Somebody's got a Pokeball. Uh, the Pokeballs have some dog chow in it and some Capelin fish. 
All right. So can you tell us, first of all, who is who? All right. Who has the ball? Let's start there because we can identify them pretty quick. Yes. So the one with the ball is, looks like Loki. Um, let's see who's running around here. Tundra's the one running in the back there. Okay. And Lobo might be going to grab a fun treat. Yep. Just came back out of the little door up yep. there. So Lobo's up there in front. You might notice that these guys look a little scraggly with their fur. Well, that is because it is spring and wolves have two coats of fur. So there's an outer fur and a undercoat. That undercoat is what they will shed out. It's the coat that keeps them warm during the winter. So they're no longer gonna need it for this hot <laughs> summer coming up. So that's why they look a little scraggly like that. But it's completely normal. Um, we have some deck brushes out there along the fence line that they like to rub against to help them remove some of that fur right off. And yes, it is soft. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to know. All right, and you said that we do have three males and a group of wolves is called a? Pack. And do they have a pack mentality with the three of them? They do. Um, in every wolf group, there is still the hierarchy. So we have Lobo, who is the alpha, and then Loki is our beta, which is the second. And then the one at the very bottom of the totem pole is Tundra. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you were mentioning that they are Arctic wolves. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So there are technically three species of wolves. There's red wolves, um, gray wolves, and Ethiopian wolves. And under gray wolves, there's a bunch of subspecies, and that include the Arctic wolves, Mexican gray wolves, and a few others to come to name. But these guys are called Arctic wolves, um, also known as polar wolves. They have the white coat, as you can see, that helps them blend in with their surroundings. And these guys are usually found out around Alaska, northern Canada, and um, Greenland, and out in those areas. All right. And about how big are these wolves? About how tall and how much do they weigh? Okay, so Arctic wolves can range between the weight about 115 pounds up to 175 pounds. Each wolf is different. Our boys range within that. So starting with Tundra, he ups and he goes up and down depending on season between about 115 to 120. And then um, Loki will go around 120, 125. And Lobo is usually the largest and he'll be around 125 to 130, 135. So it changes seasonally. Um, wolves can be lengthwise around uh, four and a half feet to about six feet sometimes. These guys, from, and that's going from snout to tail. Their tails are about a foot and a half long. And Tundra actually has a shorter snout than the others. Um, these guys are also known to have smaller ears than your other wolves that you would find. And that also helps regulate and keep them warm during those cold winters out in Alaska and such. All right. Let's see. We're going to see if we're going to move along this fence line and see if we can get you guys some better views here. And while we're going, we'll give a few shout outs. Um, we have Aaron saying, Raven is my sister. Got to give those family <laughs> shout outs. Hey, Aaron, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Hi, Rylan. Good morning, Jaden and Jackson in Michigan. They're running around. All so right. Back here. Deanna says, Luna, my dog is excited. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Michelle wants to know, do you find the wolves are more or less active without crowds at the zoo? Honestly, they're a little bit less active, but wolves being a little sneaky, uh, they tend to keep themselves pretty busy with a lot of the enrichment we try to supply them. Um, they also are great hunters. So sometimes, unfortunately, some native birds might get caught. <laughs> Um, they also enjoy their pool. It's pool season, so we've been filling up their pool lately. Um, we also like to usually bring out the sprinkler on hot days. We also give them like fun ice piles that they love to lay in. So they're, they're pretty still good high energy, but they do enjoy the crowd. Um, we know that a lot of you guys like to howl with our wolves. <laughs> We enjoy listening to you guys trying to hit those high notes. <laughs> um, so yeah, they definitely miss the crowd, um, but we do the best we can with what we can provide while we're 
closed right now, but we're excited to see you guys come back. And you mentioned the howling. Um, some people may not know that the wolves howl for what reasons and what what kind of tips them off around okay. here? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So howling, especially out in the wild, is a way for them to communicate with each other. This allows um, pack members to know where other members are. Um, their howls echo really far distances. It's also a way to, in this case, since we have captive boys, reinforce that social bond between each other. And it's something that they do together often, if you're here, when we have sirens go by. Um, they all end up grouping together, howling, and then often will take off running together as a group pack. So it definitely does a little bit of both messages. You may notice that your own dogs, domestic dogs do it. Um, this probably comes from the ancestry from wolves to domestic breeds. Very cool. And can you recap for Ian how old they are? Yeah. So these guys are six years old. They actually just had their birthday in April. All right. And where did they come from when they came here to the zoo? Yeah. So these guys were born uh, in the same litter. Um, they were from the New York State Zoo. Um, they came to us at three months old. And at the time out here, we had two other females named Cheyenne and Crow. And when they got about six months old, uh, Cheyenne and Crow were slowly introduced and integrated because you can never just put a bunch of wolves together. They have that pack mentality and hierarchy. So Cheyenne and Crow were responsible for getting these wolf boys to learn how to be real wolves. And it worked out great. They showed them the ropes on how to interact with keepers and how to just be a wolf. And then where did the two girls? The two girls, um, unfortunately, they did end up passing away, um, but they lived long lives. That's one thing, uh, wolves in the wild only usually live six to eight years old. In captivity, they can live between 12 years to 20 years old. Wow. And those girls definitely live to at least about 12 to 15 years old each. That's wonderful. And David asks, how fast are wolves? Yeah, so wolves are actually pretty fast. They run between 30 to 40 miles per hour. Um, that's to obviously to help catch prey, and that's always successful if you have a large pack. Um, sometimes packs will be between four to six members, but the largest I think they've seen is about 12. Okay. And Sue wants to know, what's the difference between wolves and coyotes? Wolves and coyotes. So coyotes are also a type of canine or canid. Um, honestly, Coyotes are a little bit closer to a fox, um, size-wise, bite force-wise. Um, it's just a whole different type of species. Um, their differences also come with how their behavior is. Um, coyotes don't have that territory mentality where wolves do. They have a home range that they protect. Um, the pack mentality, again, coyotes are definitely usually off by themselves besides being a mother with, you know, pups. Okay. And here in our exhibit, how much um, enrichment do you usually provide? What all have you put out today and what all are they going to explore? <laughs> yeah, so every day we try to give about four items of enrichment. Um, so that ranges between, especially during the hot months, some type of ice enrichment for sure. So today I gave them ice buckets with pig ears and some small trout. Um, hopefully one of the boys will pick one up so you can see that jaw force. Uh, we also gave them the puppy chow and the paper mache. They really like to tear up boxes. Um, <laughs> they love a lot of scents. So we try to even come out on the outside of the exhibit and spray scents around the exhibit. Um, when we can go inside, we also put the spices on exhibit. Anything to keep them active and enjoy the time being out here, especially if there's no public. And that being said, you don't go in with them. Actually, we do. So. That's a good, that's a great thing to bring up. So we are free contact with the wolves. Um, we only go in when there's like a necessary repair that needs to be made. Um, if we have to do the pool system, but they are also trained to be shifted inside when we um, do other things. So it's a half and half. We never do any training while we're inside with the wolves. And when we do go in, we always outnumber the wolves. So we become the alphas in the yard. Um, we have respectable distance and you always, as of course, there's a healthy fear. So you're always on guard. You never trust an animal to the whole extent because they are wild. And so we definitely um, take care of the yard and keep our space. And 
it works out very well keeping a balance like that. Great. And Ainsley would like to know, what do you feed them? So their diet ranges a lot, but we sometimes will give them rats. Um, they used to get bunnies from here and there. We like to switch it up. We definitely give them deer. They get um, Millican, which is ground up horse, um, which is pretty common for many of the carnivores here at the zoo. Um, they also get some uh, cow heart and horse loin um, pieces and chunks. Uh, they also get knuckle bones and the bones are to help uh, clean their teeth to get those plaque off because you guys brush your teeth, but these guys don't do it the same way. <laughs> Not quite the same. <laughs> yeah. And um, Vanessa, enrichment is anything that we give the animals to stimulate natural behaviors, to yeah. work their mind, to help them problem solve, to, yes. you know, to keep them active and to keep them acting as wild animals. So yes. it can range anything from these little stuffed balls mm -hmm. to to what? To changing their environment some way. Uh, we've done bubbles, which is <laughs> actually fun to watch. The wolves sometimes get a little scared of bubbles, which is funny because you're a powerful wolf. Um, we'll also add uh, brows. Um, they like to tear that apart. Um, yeah, any way we can manipulate their surrounding that they're in every day to make it exciting and fun is going to be enrichment in a great way that we keep these guys active. And Grady would like to know if wolves are nocturnal. That's interesting. They are a little bit more active at night. Uh, I think that goes along with it being cooler. Um, they're not the biggest fan of the heat, especially with a coat like that. <laughs> but yeah, um, they're pretty active at night. It's a different type of environment, I'm sure. Um, but they're not necessarily nocturnal. All um, right. And... Kelly, age eight, wants to know how many boys do we have? Recap the three that we have and give us their names and all, yes. their, all their stats again. <laughs> yes, so we have three boys, and again, they're all brothers. Their names are Lobo, Loki, and Tundra, and they're six years old. All right, and guys, she did mention earlier that we used to have two girl wolves, female wolves, who helped raise these boys up, but they since have passed on. We do have just the three brothers here on exhibit now. And can you recap for Drake how we keep them cool in the summer? Yeah, so fun things that we do, we give them like a bunch of ice bucket treats. Uh, the best thing that you probably, even some of you have might have seen us, we bring a bunch of ice chip piles and we set them right up front. They like to lay under the shady tree in their ice piles. And we also have a sprinkler and pool and a pool yes. they've got all the good water 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 sources yeah season, huh? for sure yeah. and uh, now with the trees growing as they have lots of shade and sue asks do you give them a bath and brush them <laughs> uh we do not do that <laughs> um, again these guys are free contact only to enter the yard but we protective contact when um training with them so no, we do not brush them, uh, but we do have deck brushes that are placed out on exhibit for them to rub against. That helps get that shedding off. Again, when they go swimming, it comes off as well. And every now and then they'll rub against the trees to get it off. So no, we don't brush them. <laughs> All right. And Harley wants to know, how would someone go about getting a job working with wolves at a zoo? Yeah, for sure. So with working at a zoo, um, biggest thing is, you know, you got to have that passion. You definitely want to make that known. Start off with volunteering at your local uh, dog shelters, kennels. Experience is like the biggest thing. And then once you're old enough to start schooling, um, I recommend getting a degree and probably a science-based um, study. Uh, anywhere from zoology, biology, um, animal behavior, anything of that sort. And then start, uh, check out your local zoo, see if they have a volunteer program and start just being active. That is the best way to get rolling and learn. And also educate yourself while you have the time. Um, definitely check out our news feeds like we're doing. You learn a lot of information. Next time you visit the zoo, read a lot of the signs. There's a lot of extra information out there. Yeah, that's the best way to get started. Great advice. And Jaden and Jackson ask, do you ever see them howling at the moon? <laughs> I have never seen them howl at the moon. Maybe our night keepers might know that one better. Um, but uh, no, not at the moon. I wonder if they do. Oh, we have a siren. 
Oh. I hear a siren. Maybe if it comes close enough, we might actually see a howl. Yep, it's pretty far in the distance right now, yep. but let's hope it comes by us. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be cool for you guys to see. Um, Connie wants to know if um, wolves can live in cold southern areas too. Cold southern areas. So yeah, there's a, definitely a couple species I think that live more south, yeah, like your uh, Mexican gray wolves. Um, maybe the eastern timber wolves might also follow that route. Uh, these guys, not so much just because they weren't built for that. They were more built for colder weather, so they can handle those negative degrees up in Alaska and northern Canada. Very nice. And um, how do they become the alpha in the group? Yeah, so that comes with as they age, um, they'll show dominance when playing. So everything starts off with play. And uh, as they get older, um, naturally the instinct of wanting to be in charge kind of develops. And whether the other ones submit to the much stronger, much older one, that's kind of how they pick it out. So Lobo has always shown that very dominant trait, uh, even when it comes to sharing <laughs> some of the enrichment sometimes. <laughs> and do they share? Sometimes they do. Um, Loki, um, is the most relaxed one I can say and Loki's the one actually walking here in the middle um, he is the most chill wolf probably we have sometimes he'll just not even argue or fight for the enrichment and he'll let Tundra who again is the Omega so he's the bottom of the group have extra oh yeah it's actually pretty cute brotherly love there a little brotherly love <laughs> yeah awesome and these guys can come in different colors though, right? Yeah, so the Arctic wolves will be brown, mostly as pure white, if not a little bit of a gray. Um, sometimes you might notice that Lobo has like a reddish brownish tint to them. It's also another way we kind of help tell them apart if you don't know their faces well. Um, but yeah, wolves tend to range between black colors and browns and a mixture of both. And they are quite active. Um, how often do they sleep? Yeah, so wolves will sleep for like short periods of times. It's in short bursts through the day. Um, they are watchful of other predators in the wild and also other wolf packs potentially. Um, so it's on and off through the day. I think they get about maybe 15 hours a day. Um, a lot of the time is spent traveling. They'll spend eight to 10 hours traveling their home range in the wild, so. They, they do a lot in a day. Oh, for sure. <laughs> they do. And Shirley wants to know, do they smell? Do they smell? I say they usually, I don't smell anything unless they roll in something stinky. <laughs> um, we do sometimes use the um, hunter lures. So like the deer urine smells and stuff. And I don't know what it is, but sometimes they like to roll in it. <laughs> but other than that, they don't usually smell. And Ruth says they're so beautiful. They really are. They are. I think the best time to see them is definitely in winter. Oh, love watching that white coat get really thick and they're beautiful when it's snowing. That's why, you know, the lights is the best time to come to. Oh, yes. And that's a good, that's a good question. Um, what would, you said winter would be the best time of year. Is there a good time of day to come see them? Time of day? Uh, early in the morning and, um, I would say if you know it's going to be a super hot day, the earliest you come, the better. Because um, waiting around, maybe the sun might be too hot. Um, but yeah, the earliest, as soon as the zoo opens, I recommend you come right over to wolves and check them out. They're usually pretty active in the morning, like you see. And Ethan and Cameron would like to know if these boys are siblings. Yes, they are all brothers, all born from the same litter. And were there just the three of them in that litter? There was just the three, yes. And you said they came from New York? Yep, the New York State Zoo. All right. And Calvin, age six, would like to know what kinds of snacks do they eat? So they eat a lot of snacks, a lot of your usual dog treats, like the bacon strips and <laughs> whatnot. Um, we also will give them, um, from time to time, jello. Uh, time to time, they also might get capelin, which are these small silver fish. It's not something normally we get in the wild, but it's okay here every time time to give them a little something different a little something different change it up um they also get lard which is fat which is also normal because they'd get a lot of that fat from eating like a muck's oskin 
musk oxen out in the wild. And Kimmy asks, do they have a favorite toy? Favorite toy, ooh, it's a great question. Um, I'm gonna go with, hmm. They do like the barrel that we put out every so often and we'll stick brows in it. I think that's probably one of their favorite things right now. And unfortunately, sometimes they like to grab the hose if we need to use it, <laughs> which is always like playing tug of war. So that's no fun for us. <laughs> fun for them. Fun for like them, though. but yeah. Very cool. And we always like to ask whoever we're interviewing, what mm -hmm. is your favorite part of your job? Oh, so many parts. But if I had to narrow it down, I'm going to say getting to know each individual animal. Um, they do have such different personalities. Um, when I started, I didn't, I didn't know if I could tell these guys apart. I was like, they all look the same. And then once I got to know their different personalities, they're completely different. And I really enjoy giving animals enrichment. I think watching them explore and have fun and get excited is super rewarding. That is so cool. And Daniel asks, what type of husbandry training do you do with them? So, um, they have, uh, inside den area. Um, that we hose and scrub daily. Uh, we also set up, they have their side yard um, where we typically feed them the Millican treats. It's also part of the training we do. Um, when we service the main yard, um, when we usually shift them in, we uh, make sure we clean up all the poop we can get, any old enrichment we remove and we replace new enrichment. Uh, we do the pool, we'll drain it, uh, scrub, clean it, refill it with fresh water. Um, there's lots of upkeeping that goes into here. Our awesome horticulture team also trims bushes and stuff and keeps it nice and shady for this time. So that's awesome. That's how we keep this uh, area nice and together. Absolutely. And Rebecca would like to know if they always circle and run like this and why? Yeah, so <laughs> Tundra is doing it the most. Um, He's not used to people being maybe so close like Corey is, but Corey's getting a good shot from a safe distance. Uh, he's not uh, at all um, stressed out in that sense. We could tell that because he would have his tail tucked underneath him. So he's doing fine. It's also a way these guys sometimes like to cool off. Uh, the wind's blowing right now. But uh, yeah, it's pretty normal for them to check their whole yard. Uh, they're probably also marking their scent everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And this is exploring their territory exactly. and, you it's know, completely normal. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll even bring my scooter and ride down along just so they can run the whole yard and they enjoy that. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, how long have you been working with the wolves? Yeah. So I've been working with the wolves two years now. I've been here three years um, and they're just awesome to work with. <laughs> and do you work with any other animals? There we go. Thank you. <laughs> do you work with any other animals? I do. So I'm what's considered a large mammal swing keeper and I get to work with the polar bears and the seals, the cheetahs, um, the tigers, <laughs> the uh, brown bears. I kind of little go a little bit everywhere and um, every so often sometimes the hoofstock and giraffe. And are the wolves your favorite? The wolves? I'm going to have to say they're definitely in my top three. <laughs> <laughs> We won't tell them. We won't tell them, but they are in the top three. Oh, that's funny. And Isabel wants to know, when is their birthday? Their birthday was April 18th. So they actually just turned six years old. Yeah. And Clara wants to know, which wolf is your favorite? I knew it was coming. <laughs> I'm definitely, I have a big heart for Loki. I do. He, He's like the best to train with. Um, again, he's very curious always likes to check out and see what you're doing um and he's relaxed and again he shows that brotherly love and lets tundra have all his stuff even when i don't want him to <laughs> and i made something special for him but yeah he's probably my favorite loki Aww. and talk to us again about their personalities so for that sure. was loki that you yeah. just described uh-huh so lobo he is the mischievous one <laughs> Um, oftentimes he's always trying to figure out a way he can either maybe grab the broom or see we just actually planted something and he immediately unplanted the plants <laughs> um, 
So he's got that mischievous alpha wolf, I can do what I want type of vibe. Tundra is a little bit, he's come a long way. He used to be a lot more shy and he's come around to like become his own wolf. Um, he's definitely not as confident all the time as the other two boys, but he's got his own type of style. And can their hierarchy change within the group? Yeah, so that's actually what we've been seeing over the last year. Um, ever so often, it seems like Loki and Tundra might swap, where Tundra comes from the bottom, Omega, and moves up to being Beta. And, uh, or, yeah. So uh, it's interesting to see. Sometimes I think that's just because Loki, again, is so chill. <laughs> so he's not going to really <laughs> fight or argue. He just kind of lets it happen. But as soon as he wants that position back, Loki gets it right back. So, yeah, it changes a little bit. But uh, neither one of them have ever, that I've seen, tried to go for Alpha yet. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, Mary Beth asks, what are predators to wolves? Oh, great question. <laughs> That's a great question I wasn't prepared for, actually. Um, if I had a guess, I'm going to assume maybe a bigger pack of wolves, another neighboring um, wolf pack that might have larger and stronger group. Um, if I'm just going off my best guess, but definitely encourage everybody to definitely educate yourself on that one, too. I'm going to look that up. Because uh, they are known to be the predator. Yeah, they're known <laughs> to be the predator. So I'd be interested to check to see if my answer is correct. But I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with a neighboring pack or a stronger pack. She feels pretty good about that one, guys. <laughs> and Nicole wants to know, what is their lifespan? Lifespan, yeah. So out in the wild, um, usually can range from about four to eight years. Uh, captivity, we're going for about 12 to 20 years. Very nice. And Kenny, we have three wolves here at the zoo. They are all male. They are all brothers. They're all about six years old and their names right. are Loki, Lobo, and Tundra. Yes. All right. Very cool. Um, Jessica made a good point. Humans would be a good predator for Ah, wolves. there you go. True. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and see, that's, that's probably the thing. So Arctic wolves are a little bit isolated. Um, there's not as many people living out in that far region of Alaska because the negative temperatures are so harsh. So Arctic wolves probably have the least to worry about, but if we're looking at other, other um, subspecies of wolves, then yes, of course, you'd have your people moving in, um, hunting because the food shortage would be low. So those would definitely play a role in it. Very so good point. Yes, thanks guys. See. We're all learning something during these live feeds. Well, it seems that we have reached the rest portion of the day. Yeah, it looks like we're going to nap time. <laughs> so we are going to wrap up here for today. Thank you guys all so much for joining us. Thank you, Raven, for sharing this very cool information sure. and so much of it with us. Yeah. We all learned a lot today. And guys, as we have said, um, we are committed to doing these live feeds each weekday that we are closed and unfortunately we do remain closed and we don't have a reopening date yet. Um, many of you know we are hopeful that the governor will address zoos, aquariums, museums, entertainment this week and as soon as we know more we will let you guys know more. So thank you so very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for more information. As we know more you will know more. And let's take a cue from the wolves and go all, we can all go relax. We'll see you guys tomorrow.